Good day everyone! Again, this is Teacher Alvin, your TLRific teacher. Today, we will discuss about starting the animal racing and the fish racing project. Get your pen and your notebook and try to take down notes all the important details about the project. Let's go! Okay. Starting the animal racing and fish farming project. Starting to operate a farm like any other business, endeavor, required research, critical thinking, educational background or technical know-how and sufficient funding. At this point, you probably have decided what animal you would like to raise on your farm. Having made that decision, it is time to learn to prepare a work schedule. Drop your action plan using bullet points of what you want to do, how you want to do it, and what you are willing to do. Get to your goal. Set a concrete attainable goal. Determine how your plan to attain that goal that you set. What makes you different from other farms or farmers doing the same thing? Last time, we will discuss about fish farming in our country. For today's objectives, at the end of the lesson, you are expected to Plan for the Family Animals Fish Racing Project Implement plan for the project And manage the marketing of the products Do you have a marketing plan? Do a strength, weakness, opportunities, traits, or SWOT analysis? What are your strengths? What do you think are your weakness? Are there opportunities you look into? What potential traits should you be aware of? Prepare your SWOT analysis table following the sample below. The following are the required permits when putting up a farm business. Number 1. Developing a business plan. Letter A. You need to have a business name registration. Letter B. Barangay clearance. Letter C. Mayor's permit and license or sanitary permit. Letter D. Tax identification number or team. And of course, you need to have letter E. Environmental compliance certificate or ECC. 2. Planning for operations. This is an outline of the day-to-day -day operation of your farm. What gets done? How it is done? When it is done? Who does it? It is important to keep a record of your daily operations and processes that you can use as reference in the future. Number 3. Development of the marketing plan. This answers the question, what do you do to your products once this become available? Establishing your financial plan. This includes budget allotment versus expenses, debt if any, labor and miscellaneous expenses of the farm. 5. Execution of the business plan Proper execution of the business plan equates to sound daily farm operations. At this point, you as a farm operator are able to translate all your actions to income generation and experience gain. 6. Monitoring As with any business, it is important to keep records to assist whether your farm business yields income or not. Assuming that business is good, farm products are abundant, and daily operation is at its peak, you should be able to set standard for all aspects of production. For example, quantity of milk produced every day, number of young born every breeding cycle, number of animals sold every selling season, etc. 7. Research and Development it is best to keep learning and take in new ideas and practices that can help improve your daily operations. The internet is a good source of free information not only from local but international sources as well. There are numerous agricultural websites dedicated to animal raising which aim to spread information to all who are willing to learn. Local and foreign instructional videos can also be accessed through video sharing websites. In the Philippines, there are farming cooperatives and associations willing to share new farming information and technology to the willing. 
the government through the Department of Agriculture and other government and non-government organizations is implementing countless programs which aim to assist farmers in every way possible from training to financial, technical, and infrastructure development. Single formula for computing for the income of a farm business. This time, let's have our simple computation about our project. Existing piggery in the backyard. A simple sample computation. 10 piglets worth of 2,500 per piglet. A 6 months old pig ready for selling. Averages of 90 kg assuming price per kilo is 120 pesos 2,500 per piglet times 10 heads equals to 25,000 cost to buy piglet 1,000 food allowance per head per month times 10 heads times 4 months equals to 40,000 cost of food for 10 growing pigs 90 kilograms ideal selling weight at 6 months old times 120 per kilo of live pigs equals to 10,800 10,800 selling price of each pig after the 4 months growing period 10,800 per head times 10 heads equals to 108,000 pesos 108,000 pesos selling price of 10 pigs grown after 4 months Less 25,000 cost of 10 of pig at starter. Less 40,000 cost of food for 4 months. Total of 43,000 income in 4 months. Or 10,700 pesos per month. With the assumption that labor is free since work is done by the member of the family. Rubrics for animal raising. 5 points for excellent, 3 to 4 points for good, and 1 to 2 points for. Let's proceed to the marketing the farm produce. Direct farm sales. You can sell animals or animals by products directly from your farm. This is a very convenient way to generate income since there is no extra cost for rent. All your selling transactions can be done within your farm. This way, selling can be more interpersonal and a friendly customer relationship can be easily be established. You could even tour clients around the farm as an extra. Farmers Market or Livestock Auction Market As an animal raiser or farm operator, you should be an lookout for events such as livestock auction, market or similar events in your area where people from nearby provinces come to buy livestock direct from racers themselves. One such as popular auction market is the one held every Friday in Padre Garcia, Batangas. Farm to market. Some farming families or entrepreneurs also have a meat shop or fish stall in the nearby wet market to sell their own animal product. This entrepreneur shell out a little more on the cost of rent but that is usually offset by better return of investment in the form of higher sales quantity. Next, we have restaurants. One possible livestock client can be the nearby restaurants in your area. You could establish Suki system where discounts and freebies can be exchanged by both parties aside from other exchange deals and short deals next selling through the internet the internet can be proved to be a big help to animal racers in marketing animals and animal products due to the wide coverage of the internet aside from placing ads on different ads websites you could also use social media to market your animal farm products and services lastly selling through middlemen there are entrepreneurs and there are people who work with entrepreneurs to make deals with other entrepreneurs resellers and dealers these are called middlemen 
Middlemen are people who buy goods from animal racers and sell them to retailers or other consumers. Always remember, raising different animals requires different preparations. Personal interest, family and educational background, environment, and available resources are important consideration in deciding to get into animal or fish racing. There are government agencies and non-governmental organizations that aim to help all kinds of farmers technically and financially. Let's do this. After you have decided what animals to raise, prepare a PowerPoint presentation on the following. The kind of animal you have decided to raise. A list of materials you will need to start the project. A schedule of work for raising, caring, processing, and marketing of products. Your possible expenses and income at the end of the project. Lastly, list of recommendations. Thank you very much for watching my video. Hope that my video give you a lot of information about the animal racing and the fish racing project. Rub, rub. <laughs> Shout out time.